Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we've got a power pack to line up. Very high ABV punching class of rums. That's right. So we have three 151 proof rums to take a look at. And then just a couple of, you know, little 69% or a little 59% or no big deal, right? Well, I'm going to try to go very easy. But what I'm trying to show you is uh, what their different flavor profiles are going to be so that you can make a good determination on whether or not it's something that you would want to mix in certain cocktails, that type of thing. All right. Now, let me introduce the rums. Ed Hamilton. Okay. He's, so I've got two of his rums up here. This is Beach Bum Berry's Zombie Blend. It's a blend of, let's see, Trinidad, Jamaican, and Guiana. Okay. Trinidad, Jamaican, and Guiana rums, if I remember correctly. Then we have, and that's again, 59%, 59% retail pricing, about $35. And then we have the Plantation OFTD, the Overproof Rum, 69% ABV. Retail pricing on this one is about, again, about $30, $35. Uh, this one has Barbados, Jamaican, and Guiana. Then we have the Hamilton's 151 right here. Hamilton's 151 is all Guiana rum. And next we have Gosling's, oh, by the way, price point on the Hamilton is going to be about $35, $40, if I remember correctly. Gosling's Black Seal Rum, this one's only about $25. This is a Bermuda Rum, okay, but also 151 proof. And I want to say this is a liter bottle, by the way, a liter bottle for about $25. And lastly, we're going to have Lemon Heart uh, 151 Rum. Uh, this one is from Guiana. And this one retails at around $25 for a 750 milliliter. Okay, <clears throat> so let's start at the very beginning with Beach Bum Berries Zombie Rum. Let's see. Ooh. Very nice, very vegetal. This one has a lot of. Mm. Wow, this one reminds me, even though it doesn't have any of their any of this in there. But rum agricole, so the, a lot of that sugar cane essence in it. Grassy, sweet sugar cane juice coming out of this. Of course, that big heavy molasses is in here. I would almost call this one on the nose. I'm trying to get past that. There we go. I had to blow it out a second. It was kind of compacting in there. There's a little bit of fruitiness to it, but kind of like a little bit of baked cherries, baked plums. Maybe a little fig in this one. A little bit of yams as well. Yeah, it's pretty big on that, along with that grassy sweetness. Overall, really, really solid nose. All right. <clears throat> Plantation OFTD going up to 69% ABV. Mm, all right, this one less grassy, a little more funky, which is kind of right down my alley here because I kind of like that in the Jamaican rums. Oh, this has got a lot of orange essence, like a uh, those Seville orange peels is in this one. Plums. Figs. I'll call this one just straight up molasses. Maybe a little sorghum in this one as well. Lots of baking spices here. There's a little wisp of that vegetal sugar cane that that was had a lot of. This one just has just a little whisper of it, but very, very nice. All right, Hamilton's 151, the Guiana rum. Oh, it's kind of muted. That's a little dangerous. I went ahead and shook it and coated the hole inside that glass. There we go. 
It's pretty simple on this one. This one is just like molasses. Oh, there we go. A little bit of canned vegetables here. Like, oh, what is that going to be? Almost like molasses. A little bit of caramel. A little bit of canned peas. That's just that vegetalness. But it does have a little bit of a metallic tone on that nose. I think that's why it's um, heading that way with the descriptor. As we get over here and I kind of swing it to a different nostril. Over here now I'm picking up a little more of almost like that orange oil that I was expecting. That one's in here. The vibrancy a little more on the fruit here. I'm picking up more plum. Cinnamon is popping, but again, we're really high in ABV here. Caramelized, yeah, very caramelized sugars, burnt. Kind of earthy tone to it. I like that. That's good. Not complex. This was much more complex. Both of these were on the nose than this one, but I kind of like where that was. All right, Gosling's Black Seal 151. Hmm. Not nearly as complex as the other three. This kind of reminds me of, uh, this is a little more of what I'd expect you know, when you're when you're just topping off a cocktail with something and it doesn't really matter what it is, this would be a good one. It's got a little bit of that, you know, that burnt molasses tone. A little bit of that sweet, almost butterscotchiness going on. That, that almost the, uh, like an imitation vanilla extract. That's a little bit in here. Maybe a little graham cracker. A little orange oil. Lots of clove, little anise, fair amount of cinnamon. Not bad, not bad, but on the nose so far, I give these the head up there. Ooh. All right, Lemon Heart 151. Guiana Rum. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. You know, the thing to remember on a lot of these is, you know, a lot of these rums, they'll allow for, of course, coloring to be added, so don't really go by this, this coloring or that coloring. But this is ridiculous here on the nose. This one has molasses. <laughs> yeah, it's almost Korean barbecue. It's got a Worcestershire sauce on it. It's kind of salty, meaty, that's in here. Uh, sour plums, pureed plums. A little bit of vinegar in it. A little clove, a little cinnamon. And that's about it on that one. So that one has the most, that's like the deepest nose, I think. Yeah, not, maybe not the best nose, but it definitely is the, the deepest. All right, let me prime the palette there. Okay, starting back over here with Beach Bum Berries Zombie Blend Rum at 59%. Oh, yeah, that nice sweet sugar cane. Mm. Mm. Almost a little medicinal here. It's a really nice rum. It feels very pure. It doesn't feel like they've added, you know, a lot of sugars or anything to it. Lots of, lots of uh, brown sugar, molasses, plums on this one. Lots of anise. A little bit of dates characteristic in it. Lots of clove. A little bit of orange oil in it. 
little vanilla in there as well. Wow, I, I really like that one. That's really good. Lingers on the palate, that fruit, that sour plum essence. Maybe a little bit of cherry in there as well. That definitely has a little bit of that Jamaican funk in there. It came through. On the nose, it was just a little more Martinique-ish, right? That little rum agricole type situation. But no, not on the palate. That's gonna be that's gonna be another rinse. All right, plantation OFTD overproof. Oh, that smells really nice. Oh, oh, that's really good. Big brown sugar, big molasses, big clove, anise orange oils a little bit of pineapple almost like the just a little underripe pineapple to it plums and figs and dates in this one a little bit of cocoa not a lot yeah but the that clove is just huge in it and all those I mean that to me is like a tiki rum in a bottle, bang, right there. I can see where this one is going to come in a little more handy in some cocktails. Because this one is just like pure, just dark rum at its core. This one has that little bit of that grassy, sweet sugar cane juice going on. No, Okay. Now for the Hamilton 151. Good grief. Oh, nice, nice, nice nose. Mm. Wow, medium high viscosity. Big and rich. Oh. Yeah, it's got that heavy brown sugar heavy uh, molasses it almost has like a little bit of like a syrupy feel the way it hits the palate yeah, let me hit that one taste that one more time oh yeah all that really heavy dark caramelized burnt sugar component up front Little bit of orange oil, little cinnamon, uh, cinnamon swelling up. Fruit wise, it's not super huge. Like on this one, a little bit of plum, a little bit of baked cherries, almost like a preserve type situation. A little bit of apples in there again, baked with brown sugar, that thing. That's in there. But it doesn't really develop a ton. Like, once it hits that flavor profile early, it just kind of hangs on to it and then just fades. You don't pull anything more in or nothing else really kind of shows back up and peeking in and out. It's just kind of just tapering off. There is a little bit of a herbaceous kind of bitter um, quality to it. Almost like a, a pecan that little paper in a pecan, just a little touch of that to it. A little walnutty type character. A little smoky tone to it as well. A little burnt char tone in this one. The other two didn't. Have, they didn't have that. This one does. But again, straightforward. I can see where. If you don't want the rum to really overshadow the ingredients, you just want to give it that just simple big rum base, then a little bit of this is going to do wonders. It's not going super heavy on the orange oil or the clove or anise or like that big grassiness. Okay, Gosling's. I'm going to have to go three on that one. Gosling's Blackstrap 151. Sorry, Black Seal 151. Ooh. Okay. Mm. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can tell there's a little added sweetener in this one. It's big. It's savory. There is a little bit of alcohol kick on the back end. Okay, here we go. Brown sugar. Again, that molasses tone. That imitation vanilla is in here. Just a little bit. A little orange oil in there as well. Joined with a little lemon. A little coffee bean. A little dark chocolate. The cinnamon baking. This one's more baking spices. This is a little bit of all those little key components together. The cinnamon, the nutmeg, the clove, and anise. Those are all a little bit in there. A little bit of celery seed in this one. Maybe a little cardamom in this one. I kind of like where that's going. I think that's a really good, again, the only, the only drawback I saw here was that little bit of that ethanol, a little alcohol kick on the back end where it kind of shows its hand, right? It shows the proof. But price point, $23, $25 for a liter. It's hard to beat that. Okay. Lemon Heart 151. <laughs> yeah, as <laughs> always. It's always like the most unique nose. Okay. It's its whole it's its own thing. It's nothing like any of these others. Very salty, kind of, like I mentioned, savory. This one's very savory because you get that salty meatiness going on. Yeah, heavy molasses, heavy clove. Korean barbecue again, that comes through. A little plumminess, salted meat, that Worcestershire sauce, it's all in it. But I tell you what, you don't pick up, like this one, it kind of showed that kick of the alcohol. You don't get that one on this one. But this will probably wreck some cocktails because of that salty meatiness thing. I can see where this one's going to throw some things off, but I'm sure it's going to really enhance some as well. So this might be something to have on hand just to be able to try it, see what it does. Maybe that extra uh, amount of savoriness is going to come through into the cocktail. All right. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this lineup. I can't go back through this. It's going to be too much. But thank you, as always, for watching. Join us over at patreon.com slash liquorhound to get all these videos ad-free, to get them two weeks early so you can get out there and find these bottles a little faster than you can on YouTube. Of course, with their help, I'm able to keep my independence, source these bottles myself without relying on sponsorships or donations. Uh, but anyway, thank you all for being here. Uh, keep leaving all those great comments. I'll get back to them just as soon as I can. Have a great day and cheers.